Okay, time for another loop mash video. Loop, loop mash really isn't like my thing, but I'm just catching up to the fact that we have like 40 subscribers and the last loop mash video has been seen like 3,700 times. So either everybody's watching that 92 and a half times each, which doesn't seem likely, or there's even more people watching that just aren't subscribed. So um, since that seems to be popular, let me share something with you that they kind of snuck in at the 7.5 uh, point release, which is a plug-in effect called Loop Mesh FX. Um, if the original Loop Mesh was a you know a plug-in, then you went and brought content to it. This works the other way around. You can have your content and then add Loop Mesh's special effects to that. Um, let me show you what I mean. So what I've got here is a bunch of loops just pulled out of Media Bay. So let me let this play just a little bit. Let's see where we're starting from. Okay, so that's just your basic stuff. Let me open the mixer, and this uh, this effect, Loop Mash FX, you can you can apply it to an individual track, lots of tracks, or the whole mix. Um, I'm going to throw it the effect across the stereo output bus, so it's going to do its thing to the whole mix, which gets really annoying if you overdo it, but it's also very dramatic, and it, for certain effects, that's really popular. Um, they hide it where it is hidden under the other folder, and looks like that. So let me close up this and close up the mixer, and I'm going to let this play. I'm just going to click through some of the different... Uh, the buttons down here. You hover over them, you can see which keyboard key will trigger them. We're going to get to that in just a second. Um, and so here's how it, here's one way you can use it. So this is actually a capability that for this kind of stuff, um, Cubase has, has needed for a while. There's some others like uh, Groove Machine that have been able to do this for a long time. Um, but unfortunately, you had to like go buy Groove Machine and go down that whole road in order to do this one thing. Uh, so this is, I'm pretty jazzed about having this. Obviously, if you're recording um, violin quartets and stuff like that, this isn't going to get you very much. But if you're recording violin quartets, you're probably not watching these videos anyway. So uh, just like we talked about in another Loop Mash video, uh, people get in here, that really is the dog, um, they get real excited about this stuff and then they hit the same roadblock, which is how do I record this? And we're going to do that essentially in the same way as the big version of Loop Mash. Dog is more into violin quartets, I guess. And that is we're going to create a MIDI track and use that as the, we're going to use the MIDI keyboard to trigger this. And we're going to capture those trigger notes to uh, facilitate the recording. So I'm going to come over here and add a MIDI track, which is fine. And then this is the key to the whole thing. The output here in the track inspector we're going to route this to here, the stereo output, insert number one, uh, loop mash effects. So if I've done this right, as I play the keys here, you're going to see the appropriate triggers light up. And look at that. So <clears throat> unfortunately, um, these trigger keys don't line up with the default trigger keys for the, the other loop mash, loop Loop Mesh Senior, Big Loop Mesh. Um, I happen to have those still written on a piece of tape up here, and they don't line up at all. I'm sure there's a way to go in here and reassign stuff so that it does, uh, but for the moment you have to relearn a new bunch of trigger keys. So I'm going to start this off, this playing again, but this time I'm going to hit record on the MIDI track, capture those keystrokes, and then the whole thing becomes repeatable.
and you can see we've got the MIDI notes that are causing those events to occur, those, the effects to fire recorded right there, which means that you can come in and do all the, the same stuff you could to any other MIDI note. You can massage its location and time. You can quantize it, all that. One other tip, and then I'll, I'll cut this off. You see the, um, to me it looks like an EKG machine going across there, the little cursor. Uh, if you want to do whatever effect you're triggering, and then have your tune come back in on the on the downbeat real cleanly. You got to be off the key or off the the trigger before that thing s goes off the right hand side of the screen, because it basically it's going to do whatever it's doing in that last bar and then come in fresh again. Here, let me try to demonstrate that real quick. Uh, that I'm gonna use that one sixth stutter because it's real dramatic and if I cut it off cleanly by the end before that cursor goes out of the fourth bar it'll come back in nice and sharp if I let it roll over it doesn't necessarily come back down on, in on the downbeat. Basically, it's going to do its thing to the end of the measure you let go in and then come in. So uh, keep an eye on where that cursor position is and it'll give you some sense of how to um, nudge your timing. And you can always come into the uh, key editor here and you know grab the triggers and move them around and play with them so that the stuff starts and stops just exactly where you want it. So again, if you, you know, if you need loop mash, nothing else will do. If you don't need loop mash, almost anything else will do. But um, it works. It's a neat... I, I think this is eminently more usable than the original. At least the way I work and the, the way we're making music, you get something done and you say, oh, if I could only do a tape stop right there before the solo or do a whatever right before the break at the end. Uh, and even actually the, uh, the, the tape stop, the table stop thing for where it all comes to a, an abrupt halt, is actually a pretty usable uh, special effect for a lot of uh, commercials and things like that. So they say, hey, hold on. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. So I hope that helps. Have fun.